It is 2024 and there are a lot of inexpensive condenser microphones on the market. There must be hundreds and hundreds. And if you're a little confused about what to buy because of all that choice, but you still want to like either buy your first condenser microphone or you maybe want to upgrade and still keep a little bit of money in the bank, I'm hoping that this video is going to help you because I've got eight, I've eight different microphones, uh, all uh, you know low priced, so that um, I'm going to let you hear them. We're going to test them out a little bit. I'll go over the specs, and then uh, at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go listen through uh, to all of these clips and all of the audio, and then uh, come up with some conclusions as well. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind with all these microphones: they are all either large diaphragm or medium diaphragm condenser microphones. I'm not reviewing any small diaphragm diaphragm condenser microphones. Another thing to keep in mind is that all of these microphones require phantom power. So you have to be able to supply power to it somehow. This is normally done through either your USB microphone interface or your mixer or something like that. Also, some of these microphones have been sent to me from the manufacturers to review, but I've reviewed them in earlier videos. So none of this, uh, none of this video is sponsored. None of the manufacturers actually know I'm making this comparison video because they would probably not want me to do that but they don't get to choose so while some of the microphones have been sent to me um, this is not a paid promotion or anything like that and I'll tell you when a microphone was uh, was given to me now this microphone was not I paid for this one we are starting at the low end of the spectrum here now this microphone lists for forty dollars but I paid twenty dollars 1995 or something like that about a year ago and I'm literally, I just opened it up today. I bought it for a, a project and never used it. So I, I broke open the plastic. This is the first time I'm hearing it. This is the CAD Audio GXL 1800. And um, I got to say, as soon as I plugged it in, it's pretty noisy. Now, again, it's $20, but it's pretty noisy to the point where I went, oh. Uh, but first, let's talk about some of the accessories because... I'm pleasantly surprised with the accessories. Now, it, it comes with uh, it comes with one of these desktop microphone stands. They're all flimsy. They're all probably made by the same company or something like that. Um, they are awful. It's not CAD Audio's fault. They're just you don't want a desktop stand. They pick up too much vibration. You if you get one of these in your microphone box, throw it away. As far as I'm concerned, get a boom arm. Um, some sort of shock absorption because this is going to just make your life a living. It also came with an XLR cable, you know, which is handy because a new microphone buyer, if, if you've never owned a condenser microphone before, you're going to need an XLR cable, and it's nice to have one in the box. I suspect, given the price point of the microphone, this is probably not a reliable microphone cable. I haven't tested it. I have no plans to test it. I'm going to stick with what I'm used to because I know they work. A really pleasant surprise was that it comes with an actual shock mount. Um, the shock mount uh, is typically two concentric rings and the center ring is connected by rubber bands so that it kind of uh, supports the microphone and the microphone can kind of bounce and absorb any shocks coming down the, the mic stand or something like that. Uh, that's that's really cool. It's almost worth buying it for the shock mount because, you know, buying a, an actual shock mount, you know, is probably going to cost you that much. But um, so I'm going to pound on the desk here. I'm going to tap on the boom arm here. Now, I realize you don't have any reference points yet because you haven't heard the other microphones. I'm going to try and remember to do that for all the other microphones because not all of them have shock mounts, even in the more expensive microphone prices. Another thing that's really nice is that it comes with a foam pop filter. We're going to see microphones that cost, uh, you know, 10 times. 10 times, eh, five times as much that do not come with a pop filter, which is a little irritating. If you are doing uh, any recording of vocals, um, content creation, anything like that, you've got to have a pop filter on your microphone, not just for the pops and the, and the plosives, but because it keeps the spit and the grossness off your microphone's diaphragm. You don't want to ruin a really nice mic or even a really inexpensive mic by just gunking it up with spit because it's just not going to last very long. Okay, so for all of these mics, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you the what I think are the important specs. Obviously, microphones have tons and tons of specs, and most of them really, they, they, they don't matter. But I'm going to tell you what does matter. All right, so first off, sensitivities. Now, sensitivity in a microphone is basically how loud the microphone is. If you've got a dynamic microphone like a Shure SM7B, that's going to be like minus... 
56 dBV, if I remember the number correctly. And that's really, really quiet. It needs a lot of amplification. Now, condenser microphones have built-in amplification, and it's kind of the way they work. And so they, they tend to be louder. Uh, this microphone is pretty loud. It's minus 27 dBV, which is really good. And I'm going to rate a bunch of these different specs, um, A through F. And uh, this definitely gets an A for that. Now, keep in mind also, this is the manufacturer's stated numbers. Whether those are accurate or not, I have no way to measure it other than just using my ears. It does seem pretty loud, so we'll give it an A. Now, another important spec with microphones is what kind of really loud sounds can they handle? And that's that's usually measured with maximum SPL or sound pressure level. And uh, this microphone can handle up to 124 dB, which... I mean, it's okay. You know, there are there are Neumann mics, you know, that are thousands of dollars that are in that range and can only handle that volume level. So, you know, I'm going to give that a grade of a C. Now, another important spec is the, uh, the self-noise. That's how loud the noise is in the microphone just sitting there doing nothing. And, <laughs> well, this one, you know, is kind of noisy. Now, the manufacturer says that it's rated a self-noise of 16 dB. I mean, according to that number, I would give it a C based on, on some of the other microphones that we're going to look at. From what I'm hearing, though, I'm thinking it might be more of a D or an F. Now, there's a couple other things that I'm going to rate the microphones on, and um, one is accessories. And this has a bunch of accessories. And for the price, I think that's really great. Um, I don't know if it's making up for the, the, the mic quality or not, but uh, I definitely give it an A in the accessories department. Um, in terms of switches, now... Microphones don't have to have switches to be good. There are microphones that cost thousands of dollars that do not have any switches on them, and uh, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't bat an eyelash at that. So, if a microphone does not have switches, I'm going to give it a C. I'm not going to give it an F. But it's nice to have things like uh, low-pass filters, high-pass filters, pads, uh, maybe an on-off switch, that kind of thing. Um, so microphones that do have those are going to get a higher grade. But this one, I'm going to give it a C. All right, so I'm going to do a combination plosive and uh, sibilance test here with just a simple phrase. And I'm going to go directly on mic. We're going to uh, keep the pop filter on first. Peter Piper picked a sizzle, sizzle steak. All right, let's take the uh, pop filter off now. Peter Piper picked a sizzle, sizzle steak. All right, next up we have the Fifine K669C. And um, Fifine did send this microphone to me along with another one to review, and I reviewed it a couple of months ago. Uh, as I mentioned, none of the manufacturers know that I'm making this video, so this isn't sponsored or anything like that. Now, this microphone goes for $37, and um, so, yeah, we're, I mean, we've kind of doubled the price, but obviously it's not terribly expensive. But right away, I noticed there, I'm not hearing any noise in my headphones. So in terms of accessories, it comes with one of those stupid desk stands. Um, it also comes with a hard mount, which means there's no shock absorption whatsoever. It's going to pick up all the thumps and bumps and uh, hair. Here, let me demonstrate that. All right, I'm going to pound on the desk, and I'm going to tap on the uh, boom arm. Also, this microphone does not come with a pop filter. Fifine does sell um, uh, optional pop filters for it, but it does not come with one in the box. So, you know, you're probably going to have to spend a little bit more money just getting a pop filter of some sort. All right, so let's do the plosive and sibilance uh, test here. And there's no pop filter, so we're going to do it right just directly naked on the mic. Peter Piper picked a sizzle, sizzle steak. So this is definitely a medium diaphragm microphone. It's got a 16 millimeter uh, diaphragm inside of it. And, you know, uh, if you're just buying your first or second mic, that's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. Engineers and vocalists and stuff, they, they tend to prefer large diaphragm microphones for various reasons. I am not going to go into that because we don't have time. Okay, so from an accessory standpoint, I mean, I'm going to give it a C. Uh, it's, you know, pretty anemic. I wish there was at least a pop filter. In terms of sensitivity, this is a really quiet mic. Now, the sensitivity, I believe, is minus 43 dBV, which is, um, uh, if you think about it, there's a companion microphone to this that Fifine put out that is a dynamic microphone, which is usually very quiet microphones. That's minus 50. This is minus 43. That's getting really close to dynamic microphone territory in terms of um, sensitivity. So I give that a D. On the other hand, you know, I do have to crank up the volume a little bit to get the uh, to get in into my preamp, but I'm not hearing any noise. So 
I mean, is it really a big deal in the end? Maybe not, as long as you got a decent preamp to, to boost the uh, the signal. The maximum SPL or sound pressure level that this can handle is 130 dB, which we're, we're gonna see that number a lot. It's a pretty common level, um, pretty decent. It's not the best, it's not the worst, but it's closer to best than worst, so I'm gonna give that a B. Now, self noise. No idea. I can't find that anywhere on the internet or in the documentation. They just don't mention it. Normally when a company doesn't mention it, it's because they're hiding something, but I'm not hearing a lot of noise. So I think maybe they just forgot to measure it or didn't want to spend the money to measure it or whatever. Anyway, I, I don't have any information on that, so I can't give that a grade. Now in terms of switches, there are no switches on this microphone either. We're going to give it a C and uh, we're just going to move on. Okay, we have jumped up quite a bit in terms of price and quality at this point. Now, this microphone goes for $90. It's the SE Electronics X1A. And I gotta admit, I have a little bit of a soft spot for this microphone. It, it really just bats above its weight compared to other microphones in the around $100 uh, class. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, SE Electronics did uh, send this to me. Uh, probably a year ago, something like that, um, for a review. Again, nobody knows I'm actually making this video, so this isn't sponsored, but I'm just letting you know this was given to me. Now this microphone, in terms of the accessories department, gets a D in my mind, because it only comes with a hard mount. No, uh, no pop filter, nothing else. And the hard mount isn't even one I particularly like. It's, um, it's not very secure. Now, you can actually just pop the microphone out of it. I'm just worried that you, someone could knock this and it would just fall to the ground. Here, let me show you. See, it just comes out of this little clip here, kind of like a microphone you would have on a, on a straight stand for vocalists, like performing. Although, <laughs> actually, come to think of it, it doesn't have a pop filter and it doesn't have a shock mount, but I believe it actually has some sort of internal pop filtering, like there's foam inside the head basket here, and also the diaphragm is on a shock mount so that it kind of reduces all of that. So, I mean, if it's built in, maybe it gets a C. Let's pound on the desk here and uh, tap on the uh, the boom arm here. Now again, no pop filter on the outside, but maybe one inside if I recall. I'm pretty sure there's one inside. Anyway, let's do our plosive and sibilance test. Peter Piper picked a sizzle sizzle steak. Now this microphone is reasonably loud. It has a sensitivity of minus 34 dBV, so I give that a grade of a B. Now in terms of switches, uh, Okay, I really want to give it a thumbs up because that's one of the things I think is pretty exciting about this microphone. Given the price, it's got some parameters. It's got some things you can change. It's got two switches. It's got a 20 dB pad so you can uh, reduce the volume if you're like recording drums or something and it's just overpowering the mic. You can kick in the pad there and reduce it. So here, I'll kick in that uh, 20 dB pad and it's going to get really quiet. And as you can tell, it's gotten really quiet and we're back. Um, it also has a low roll, uh, low roll off filter or a high pass filter. So if you're getting a lot of boomy sounds or you're getting a lot of plosives and things like that, and you just want to cut down on that, you can roll it off at a hundred Hertz. And, um, so it will thin out most, uh, at least male vocals, and it might thin out female vocals as well. That's the trade-off, but it doesn't, doesn't really do serious damage to the frequency response. So let's uh, re-engage that. Okay, we're back to normal. Now the maximum SPL on this microphone is, you guessed it, 130 dB. There's that magic number. Uh, so give it a grade of a B, because it's not the best, but it's uh, pretty decent. And and by the way, if, if you put in the pad, of course, a 20 dB pad, then the maximum SPL becomes 150 dB, but I'm rating all the mics at their sort of basic neutral setting uh, SPL. Now self noise on this microphone is rated at 16 dB, which I mean, is getting on the noisy side technically, um, but I, I've never noticed any noise with it, so I, I don't think that's a problem. So I'm gonna give this a grade of a C for self noise. Almost forgot this microphone is a medium condenser microphone. I don't have the uh, the actual diameter of the um, uh, of the diaphragm handy, but it looks similar. I think it's probably around 16 millimeter as well. Um, but trust me, it's medium. Okay, we are moving up in price here a little bit. This microphone goes for $100. Um, this is the MXL V67G, and it's very distinctive looking, or I think it's atrocious looking, quite frankly. The green and gold, uh, not all microphones are there for the looks, right? We don't buy microphones for, 
Okay, who are we kidding? We do buy microphones for looks sometimes, but sound quality is important too, so we're gonna talk about that. Now this microphone I paid for by myself, I know what you're thinking. Why did you buy such an ugly mic? So this microphone is truly getting into large diaphragm uh, condenser territory. It has a 25 millimeter diaphragm, which is also a one inch diameter diaphragm. And uh, that is inside a 36 millimeter capsule. Now, in terms of accessories, you're looking at them. Uh, it comes with a hard, hard mount. That's it. I mean, it's a sturdy hard mount. The microphone screws in. It's not going to fall out even if you suspend it upside down or sideways or anything like that. So in terms of uh, hard mount, it's it's a quality mount, but there is nothing else. There's no no pop filter, no, um, uh, no uh, shock mount or anything like that. So from an accessory standpoint, I'm going to give it a C. Now the maximum SBL on this microphone is... 130 dB. Isn't that weird? I don't know why that is. Anyway, it gets a grade of a B for that because we do have one microphone coming that has uh, better SBL. So in terms of sensitivity, MXL only uh, lists this mic, uh, they, they list the sensitivity in a different unit. So uh, millivolts per PA. And I can't remember what PA stands for. Um, so I online, I did a little conversion. I believe if I did my math correctly, it's minus 36 dBV, which, you know, is pretty decent. It's right in the middle of the pack there. So I'm going to give this a C in terms of sensitivity. Now, in terms of stated self noise from the manufacturer, it's listed at 20 dB. And that's that's really high. So uh, in terms of the numbers, I'm going to give it an F. I'm just turning up the headphones here a little bit. I'm not hearing a ton of noise. So in real world, uh, you know, real world use, I, I don't think it's going to be a noisy mic, not like the the CAD audio one. You're not going to plug it in and go, Gah! I don't know if I would worry about that, but it does get an F in terms of just sheer specs. And um, in terms of switches, there's nothing. There's just the logo on the front. Um, so again, for switches, uh, I'm going to give it a grade of a C. And as far as I know, there's no built-in shock absorption or anything like that. And again, it's a hard mount. So let's pound on the desk, tap on the boom arm, and give it the old plosive slash uh, sibilance test. Peter Piper pick to sizzle, sizzle steak. Now this microphone is also $100 and it's also very popular. And I, I don't know, I think it's popular just because it's popular. It's in terms of features and sound quality, I've always considered it kind of mid, but this is the Audio-Technica AT2020. And this one I bought myself as well. I did put this up against the X1A in a uh, review shootout a, a while ago, maybe a year ago. So you can check that out if you want to. But uh, I mean, let's talk about this mic because it is really, really popular. It's in a lot of studios. They also have a USB version. Uh, so it's obviously doing well. They're somebody must be seeing something into it that I'm not that I'm not seeing. Interestingly, now that I'm have all these microphones out at once, it looks very similar to the Fifine mic or rather the Fifine mic looks like this one. It's like they made a little baby AT2020 version. So in terms of features, it comes with a little carrying pouch. Um it's got a hard mount as well. The mount is uh I mean, it's pretty secure. I don't think you're going to have the mic fall out or anything like that. But it is not a shock mount, and there's no shock mount inside. There's no uh, there's no pop filter inside. So let's pound on the desk, shall we? Tap on the boom arm. And while we're here, we might as well do our plosive sibilance test here without uh, any pop filter. And again, if you buy any microphone that does not come with a pop filter, get a pop filter. You're going to thank me later. Okay, here we go. Peter Piper picked a sizzle sizzle steak. So on the accessory front, I'm giving this, I don't know, does the case count for anything? C plus, maybe? I don't know, B? I'll be, I'll be generous, I'll call it a B. Now this microphone is a medium diaphragm microphone. It's 16 millimeter diaphragm. Uh, you see that number come up a lot in the medium size. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe they're all sourcing their diaphragms from one particular company, I'm not sure. In terms of microphone sensitivity, it's rated at minus 37 dB, which is respectable. I'm gonna give it a C because it's right there in the middle. Now the maximum SPL on this microphone is 144 dB. So guess what? This gets an A. That is 
spectacular. You can throw a lot of sound at this microphone and it's not going to distort. So I think that's why this microphone is so popular in home studios is because yes, you can use it for vocals, but you can throw it in front of a guitar amp, a guitar cabinet, and it will be able to handle the volume. If you only have one mic, I mean, that's not the greatest way to record guitar, but you could do it if you wanted to. And so it's a really all purpose, inexpensive microphone. Now the self noise on the AT2020 is also 20 dB, which is the the noisiest, uh, I guess it's tied for noisiest um, with the, it was the previous mic, wasn't it? The, the, the MXL mic. Um, so it's 20 dB, that gets it an F as well. Again, in, in everyday use, you're not going to necessarily notice that, but if you're recording really quiet stuff like, you know, finger picking guitar or things like that, you might start hearing some noise. More likely in a home studio, though, you're going to hear room sound and reflections before you hear actual microphone noise. So in terms of switches, there are no switches on the microphone, so we'll give it a grade of a C. All right, so moving up in price, we are looking at $175. Now, this is uh, another CAD audio microphone. This is the uh, Equitech E100SX. Now, the Equitech line of microphones goes way, way back, decades and decades. And even the E100 family of microphones goes back quite a ways. The SX is the uh, latest version. Uh, this revisit to the series, I think, was... Uh, uh, maybe two years ago, three years ago. I'm not exactly sure. The Equitech style of microphones, the square sort of like ice cream sandwich look, I think is is pretty cool. It's always appealed to me. It looks like a little robot on the front. Now, this microphone I did review a little while ago, and uh, Cat Audio did send this one to me for free so uh, to check out. Um, so I have reviewed it extensively before. Now, the interesting thing about this microphone is that it's a lot uh, warmer than, um, than other mics. It's, it's a little bit more muted in the high end. It doesn't have that real sizzly kind of modern microphone sound. It, so I guess it's a bit more vintage, rounded, maybe you could say. Now, uh, this is a nice mic to have uh, if your particular voice is suited towards that, if you're particularly sibilant, or if you just want an extra flavor in your, your microphone arsenal. Um, it's not terribly expensive, and it is definitely a different sound. It's also a very different look. It's cool. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone as well, and it's rated at minus 32 dBV for insensitivity. So I'll give that a B. That's pretty good. But in terms of accessories, I didn't give that a grade, did I? And it doesn't come with a pop filter. And you see me holding this here. I'll explain that in a moment. It doesn't come with a pop filter. It does come with a shock mount. I mean, a shock mount is pretty important. So so is the pop filter. I think I'm going to give this one a B. I hadn't actually thought that one out ahead of time. So even though it only has a shock mount and no other accessories, I'm going to go with that. Now it does have a pad switch of minus 10 dB, which you can engage. So um, without that, it's got a maximum SPL of 126. Um, and of course, uh, when you engage that, it has a maximum SPL of 136 dB. 126 is not great. It's fine. Uh, you do have the pad there, but 126 by itself, I'm going to give that a grade of a C. And it does have a high pass filter as well. You can uh, roll off at 100 hertz. It's a very common uh, um, roll off for microphones. So here, let's, uh, let's hear those real quick. Okay, so I'm going to engage the pad here now, and now it is minus 10 dB down, and then we'll bring it back up again. And then I will engage the low pass filter here. And uh, now we are rolling off at 100 hertz, and then we are back to normal. Now, I can even hear it in my cans. The, uh, it's pretty susceptible to plosives, especially this close. Uh, that You can get... Like this is a weird shape to get a pop filter. So I, I'm glad that CAD Audio makes a custom pop filter for it because I was trying to rig things up on it. Um, so let's hear it. Let's, we might as well. Actually, let's do our whole boom and, and stuff like that. Here's uh, pounding on the desk. Here's tapping on the boom arm. And uh, without the pop filter, Peter Piper picked a sizzle sizzle steak. All right, let's put that... Um, pop filter on there. Peter Piper picked a sizzle sizzle steak. So in terms of self noise, this microphone is rated at 9.5 dBA, which is really, really good. That's really quiet. Um, the, the quietest microphone in the world that's sold commercially, I believe is at like 5 dB or something around there. So 9.5 is really, really quiet. A plus or at least A. I'm not doing pluses and minuses. So it does have two switches. They've got one setting each. I'm going to give that a B as well. 
All right, on the boom arm now, I've got a microphone that's um, bouncing around a little bit because the boom arm is attached to the desk that I am touching here, and it's in a in a shock mount, so it's kind of wiggling around. This is the SE Electronics SE2200, and this is one of their OG mics. This one uh, was one of the first mics they released. In terms of accessories, uh, you know, they really got the accessory thing going on here. Now, this microphone goes for about $300, so you would expect or at least hope for some accessories. Um, notably, it has a full spider style shock mount, uh, you know, a large size shock mount. Uh, that's what you see wobbling around. And um, it also, obviously, because you can't see my face very well, it has a uh, metal mesh pop filter. Uh, everything else has had so far a foam pop filter fitting over the top. If it had anything, this one's got a circular disc in front. Now, in terms of content creation like uh, being on video having this giant circle here is maybe a bit of an issue now if you're doing podcasts if you're doing vocals obviously it's not an issue unless you're doing video podcasts so you kind of have to figure out how to work that now you could use some other pop filter as well anyway in terms of accessories i'm going to give this as an a uh, because uh, they've got the two most important accessories that you would need for a microphone like this or any microphone. So while we're here, we might as well do the uh, the bounce and spit. <laughs> like that's what I'm calling it. Uh, I'm gonna pound on the desk. And wow, look at that. Uh, I hope that's uh, protecting against shock because it sure is wiggling around. Okay, so tapping on the boom arm. Hmm, I think I hear some uh, thrumming there from the, like guitar strings or bass strings that, from the, uh, the shock mount. Okay, so with the pop filter in place, Peter Piper pick to sizzle sizzle steak. I can actually see the pop filter moving back and forth uh, when my uh, plosives are hitting it. Okay, so let's remove it. And by the way, this microphone gets really crushed by plosives without a pop filter. All right, here we go. Peter Piper pick to sizzle sizzle steak. See what I mean? So SE Electronics did send me this microphone, the SE2200, a while back as well, and I have done a full review on this microphone as well. Now, in terms of sensitivity, this microphone is rated at minus 32.5 dBV, uh, which is pretty decent. I'm going to give that a B. Now, the maximum SPL on this microphone is rated at 125 or 135 or 145. You're seeing where I'm going with this. It has a, a three-position pad switch. You've got nothing you've got minus 10 and you've got minus 20. Uh, now 125 db maximum spl at its basic setting is not great it's fine so I, i'm going to give it a c but know that you can record louder instruments and things like that by just kicking in the uh the pad switch now in terms of self noise this microphone is rated at 8 db that is amazing that is really impressive that gets an a for sure now to round off the switch scene here uh it has a uh, high pass filter or low roll off as well and that is a three position as well so you have nominal and you also have 80 hertz and 160 hertz so you have options and uh, i think i'm going to do the 80 hertz first here if i'm looking at this uh, actually i think this is 160. all right so this is one of the settings they're not marked with numbers they're marked with different slopes and then here's the other setting and so here's the other setting here just so you can get a, a sense of how they sound when they're rolled off and we're back to normal now i should say that even though this has a nice shock mount you should just be aware that the way the microphone fits into it, it's sort of a pressure fit. Like it's screw, when it screws under the bottom there, it, it just kind of gets tighter and clamps it. I had one viewer say that they suspended the mic upside down and the microphone fell out of the shock mount. That would be a and broke the mic. That would be a really bad thing. So just be aware with this mic, you don't want to suspend it upside down in this shock mount unless you're prepared to you know to to secure it in some other way. All right, so this is our final mic, the most expensive mic. Uh, I'm going to talk about all the mics um, in my conclusion in a little bit, but this is the, the last one I'm going to demo. This is the Lawton Audio LA220. Okay, so let's talk about accessories. Now, if I were giving grades just for boxes, I mean, look at this box. This is black on black. It's, uh, it's a pretty gorgeous box. Uh, I'd give the box an A. 
but I'm not including boxes in terms of grades. It does come with a very slim spider style shock mount, but it does have a, a sort of cut open front so you can get it right up against the guitar amp or something like that. If you need to, you're not going to have the shock mount getting in your way. Also, it is all metal, the shock mount, uh, so it's very sturdy. The uh, SE2200 shock mount, even though it was sturdy, was made out of plastic, so this just feels, you know, substantial. Now, this microphone does go for $360, so we are getting up there in terms of microphones. We're becoming less and less affordable, um, but, you know, in to some degree, you do get what you pay for. So the capsule in this microphone is a one and a quarter inch capsule. Now, that's not the size of the diaphragm. That's the size of the capsule. So that's probably, I believe this might be a 25 millimeter or one inch diaphragm inside that larger capsule. Definitely a large diaphragm microphone, though. Now, Lawton Audio did something a little different with this microphone. Instead of putting the typical one switch for a pad and another switch for a low-pass uh, roll-off, they actually have um, two filter switches. One of them does a low roll-off, one of them does a high roll-off. So if you're getting some extra sibilance or something, you can cut down with that. So I'm, I'm going to give it a B for switches, but maybe it should be like a B plus or something just because you've got... I, I'm less likely to use a, a, a pad personally with, with just speaking into a microphone because I'm not recording instruments. So I'm more likely to use some uh, EQ shaping like this. Okay, so let's give it a listen. I am going to roll off the low end first and this rolls off at 120 hertz, by the way. And so now you are listening to it rolled off at 120 hertz. You probably hear a little bit of thinning in the, uh, in the voice. Uh, let's put it back to normal. Okay, that's back to normal. All right, now we can listen to the high end being rolled off. Uh, I'm going to roll it off now. And this is rolled off at 12 kilohertz. I'm sure you notice uh, a difference there too, unless you're listening on, on your phone, in which case you probably can't hear anything. Okay, and we're back to normal. And let's try both of them, just so you get kind of a, a bit more mid-rangey sound here. And this is with both switches engaged. So we're rolling off the low end and the high end. Now, it doesn't include a pop filter. So from an accessory standpoint, Nice shock mount, no pop filter. In fact, Lawton Audio kept saying, you got to use a pop filter. You got to use a pop filter. Did they send me a pop filter? No, they don't even sell one. So it was basically, you got to go out and buy a pop filter. But I'm using it as you would receive it out of the box. Now, interestingly, the, something about either the diaphragm inside or the head basket or something seems to reduce plosives a little bit. Now, you, you'll still hear them. When, I, when I'm when i directly on the microphone, you'll hear them. But there's something about, I think it's a, a double layer head basket or something and that, that cuts down on it. So we should check that out. Um, but first of all, let's pound on the desk and let's tap on the boom arm. All right, let's do our plosive sibilance test. Peter Piper picked a sizzle sizzle steak. Now, in terms of self noise, Lawton lists this as less than 15 dB, which, I, how much less than? 14.9? I don't know. But let's assume it's 14. I'm going to give that a B. That's pretty decent. You're not going to hear any noise unless you're recording really, really quiet stuff and cranking up the, the preamp as loud as you can. Um, for most everyday use, that's not going to be a big deal. Now, in terms of sensitivity, this microphone is not a very sensitive mic. In fact, it's rated at minus 40, which is getting a little close to dynamic mics there. So I'm going to give this a D in terms of sensitivity. Oh, man, I'm glad to get those headphones off. Okay, so here are my thoughts on this. Um, the the CAD Audio GXL 1800, it's, I mean, it's $20 microphone. I'm glad that it has all those accessories, but really that noise, it's going to show up in your recordings. It's that loud. And I, I, so I think that's a deal killer for me. Spend the extra $17, spend $37, get the Fifine K669C. It sounds reasonably decent. It's a great starter microphone and you're not spending a lot of money. Now, when we get up into the $100 range, I think the AT2020 is just coasting on its reputation. I don't think it sounds very good. It's a medium uh, uh, diaphragm microphone, just like the X1A. I think the X1A sounds better. It's got plosive protection. It's got shock mount. It's got switches. It's got frequency roll off um, and it's $10 cheaper. So I think it's a way better microphone than the AT2020. I think the, the MXL mic sounds pretty decent. It's a very bright mic, but it's um, it's definitely got a large diaphragm sound to it, which is a different, it just, 
there's a different feel to it than with those other two mics. So if you're recording vocals, I think the MXL is pretty decent. If you're doing content creation, I think the X1A is probably a better choice. Now, as we moved up there, we've got that CAD audio, uh, the Equitec E100SX, which is a, kind of an oddball mic. And, and I mean that in a good way. It's $175, so it's definitely not, I don't think it's going to be your first microphone, but it would be great as a second microphone because it really, it has a unique sound to it. It's more, it's it's warm, it's kind of rounded, and to be honest, a lot of microphones these days really sound the same. A lot of them are actually using the same capsule that they buy from another manufacturer. There's like one company that makes capsules for all these different microphone companies. This microphone does not sound like that. It's almost like it's it's closer to a ribbon microphone. Now it's it's not a ribbon microphone, and if you compared the two, you'd be like, no. But it's it's in that direction. Now when we get into our top end with the SC2200 and the the one I'm on right now, the Lawton um, LA220 for content creation. If I had to pick one of those two, I'd go with this one every day of the week. It it sounds great. Uh, you can you can obviously use it pretty well without a pop filter, and it sounds even better with a pop filter in terms of uh, frequency filtering. It's got more options. The SE2200 would be really great for a vocal mic. It's just a little bit more fussy with plosives and and that pop filter, you know, even, even that pop filter doesn't cut down on plosives completely and then it's really big and in your face. So, vocals, maybe podcasting, I would use the SE2200, uh, <laughs> all those numbers. But if I uh, if I had my choice, I would go with this one uh, assuming I had the extra $60. Okay, that's the end of the review. Hope you enjoyed it.